Polaroid recently introduced the Now Plus camera, which is a box style camera based on the original one step design that was issued by Polaroid Corporation back in the late 1970s, but with one unique modern feature. That is, using the Polaroid app, which can be freely downloaded for both the iOS and Android devices, the camera's shutter speeds and apertures can be manually controlled. Now, as a user of Mint's SLR 670S camera, which is really the only other Polaroid camera in production that offers manual controls, I was certainly curious to test out how the Now Plus would compare. And in fact, I was more than curious. I was really hopeful that the Now Plus would offer a feature that's missing in my Mint camera, and that's the ability to sh set shutter speeds and apertures at one half or one third EV settings. In other words, in one half EV increments, up or down. But my ho hopes were pretty much instantly crushed. Uh, neither the shutter speeds or the apertures are adjustable in anything more than full EV steps, with one or two minor exceptions, and I'll get into that in a moment. So that said, uh, the Nail Plus is certainly a bargain at about $150, $149 uh, US, compared to the $879 US Mint uh, SLR 670S. So it just seemed like a good idea to review the Nell Plus and see how it compares to the much more expensive Mint camera. After all, if you're interested in dipping your toes into the creative world of manually controlled Polaroid cameras, then the Nell Plus is certainly an affordable approach to doing that. So here's a run through of the specifications of both cameras based partly on manufacturer specifications, but also based on my real world experiences with both cameras. And what I'm going to concentrate on is the uh, the ability to manually control uh, the uh, f-stop and aperture in the Now Plus compared to the similar features in the in the Polaroid. Certainly, there's a lot of features in the Now Plus that uh, can be played with, but I'm not really going to focus on those. And as a matter of fact, I have probably barely scratched the surface myself uh, using those features uh, on the Now Plus. So let's start the review with the camera type or the style of each camera. Now the Nell Plus is certainly a, more of a box style camera like the original Polaroid Corporation One Step which was introduced in the late 1970s I believe. Um, it's something that it's a camera that I used back in, in that in that era myself. Uh, as I said it's a box type it's more or less meant to be a, an affordable version of the original folding style of SX-70 camera that Polaroid Corporation introduced in the early 70s. Uh, the box style camera, uh, basically it, it differs in that it has a non-reflex viewfinder. In other words, you look through a viewfinder over here and you're peering through a separate viewfinder window at the front here. You're not looking through the, through the uh, lens itself. Now the Mint SLR 670S is a refurbished folding style SX-70 Alpha 1 camera. That's what it's based on. Uh, again, a, a magnificent piece of machinery uh, that was introduced by um, Polaroid back in the early 1970s. The main feature of the original SX-70 Alpha 1 camera is that it is has a through the lens viewfinder. What you see here is exactly what the film is seeing. And, and it's a really, really accurate viewfinder. Uh, you can find that you can compose fairly accurately here and know that exactly what you see through the viewfinder is what's going to appear on the, on the film in the final picture. Now, there's, there are accessories available for, for both of these cameras, but the Now Plus comes out of the box with a, a large number of uh, accessories. The main one I would say is the smartphone app, which allows you to uh, have a remote release using the the app, a self timer, allows you to do double exposures, to have actual aperture priority, uh, it has a tripod mode, a portrait mode, a light painting mode, and of course a manual mode. It also comes with a, a set of five special effect filters, it comes with a lens cap, uh, and it also comes with a neck strap, and it has a built-in tripod mount. And you also get a USB charging cable for charging the battery that is internal in the in the camera body itself. Now the Mint SLR 670S comes with just one thing, and but it's a major thing, and that's the little time machine that sits on top of the camera right here. And this is basically your shutter control, 
uh, allows you to choose your shutters. And of course the Alpha 1 camera uh, it comes with a tripod mount, which is also pretty important. Now in terms of lenses, the Nell Plus comes with a polycarbonate lens, which with a two focus zone system. And there's actually two lenses built in here. Uh, one is a standard lens, which is a, with a focal length of 102 millimeters. Um, if you're using a 35 millimeter camera, that would have a, a 40 millimeter focal length equivalent. Uh, there's also a close-up lens here that uh, is a 95 millimeter focal length, and that's equivalent to roughly a 35 millimeter uh, focal length on a 35 millimeter camera. Uh, so you can see that it's a, it's a slightly wide uh, grouping of, of lenses. Now when you're using the close-up lens, the close focus distance is up to 0.4 meters, which is 16 inches away from the, from the uh, film plane itself. Now the Mint SLR 670S, again using the original folding SX70 camera, has a really excellent glass lens. Uh, the focal length of this lens is 116 millimeter, which is a roughly equivalent to a 46 millimeter equivalent um, focal length in 35 with a 35 millimeter camera. Uh, so you can see that's more or less a, a what would would have been termed a, a normal lens in 35 millimeter film days. Uh, something that is not quite wide, not quite a telephoto, and it that would often come as a kit lens with your 35 millimeter camera back then. Now, in this case, the close focus distance is 0.25 meters or 10 inches, which is really incredibly close, really um, quite nice. So in terms of focusing, the Nell Plus is essentially an automatic uh, focusing camera with no real override. If you had to be using manual mode uh, using the, the Polaroid app, uh, then you can control the two-stage focusing, either choosing the close-up lens or the standard lens. Now with the Mint SLR 670S, of course, it is a completely manual uh, focus. You just turn the knob here and you're focusing through the lens. Uh, with the Alpha 1, there's a split rangefinder focusing aid in there that's extremely helpful. That's the way it works, right from infinity down to 10 inches away from your lens. It's all done manually with this knob. Now, in terms of apertures, the Now Plus has an aperture range from, of f11 to f64. Now, kind of maddeningly, um, it is missing uh, f45, which is if you're going up the full aperture ranges, uh, it would go from, for example, from f32 to f45 to f64. But in the manual mode on the app, it goes straight from f. 32 to f64, which is like a two EV step between the two. At the other end of the scale, uh, there's f11, but there's also an f13 step. And this is again on the, on the manual controls in the Polaroid app. So the f13 is essentially a half step between f11 and f16. So in that sense, you are getting a half EV step, but it's of minimal use. You have to be able to use that actual uh, f-stop to get that one half EV control. Now the Mint SLR 670S, on the other hand, has a just has a f8 aperture, uh, nominal f8 aperture. Uh, so you just have to work with that. Really, uh, you don't have any choice in in your in your aperture settings at all. Now. In when we come to the shutter speeds, uh, the Nell Plus has a, um, if you're just using the camera, uh, it will select shutter speeds between one second and one two hundredth of a second, and that's on the camera. If you're using the app, then the range extends from 30 seconds up to one two hundredth of a second. And again, you have to note that one two hundredth of a second is not really a standard speed. Uh, the standard speeds would go, if you're going in one stop, one, uh, EV increments would go from 1 25th of a second to 1 250th of a second. So 1 200 is actually somewhere between that. It's actually about two thirds of an EV faster than 1 25th of a second. So again, it's just a, one of those things that's a little bit confusing. Um, it would have been just nice if they, if they um, went to the 1 250th of a second. So you knew there was a, uh, an increments of one um, shutter speed from the lowest speed to the highest speed, but there, there we have it. 
Now the Nell Plus also has uh, what I think is the uh, T or the time mode uh, and they call it, I, I believe it's called the light painting mode on the on the Polaroid app. Uh, basically what that does is when you press the when you press the shutter on the app once it will open the shutter and keep it open and then you press it again to close the shutter so it'll stay open as until you actually press the, the shutter the second time. Now on the Mint SLR 670S, the shutter speeds range from one half second up to one two thousandths of a second. Uh, and that's again in in one EV increments all the way from one end to the other end. And there's also a bulb mode and a time mode. And it's all pretty clearly marked just as you would find on a uh, on a shutter dial on a on a film camera, for example. Now, in terms of exposure modes, the Nell Plus does have, does have a fairly extensive set of of exposure modes. That is, if you're using the Polaroid app. And by the way, there is a way to gain some manual control using the little push button in front of the camera here as well, so that you can actually do it on the camera without having to use the uh, the app itself. But I'll leave it to you if you decide to get this camera to just quick read of the instructions to figure out how that works. Using the Polaroid app, it, it of course offers, as I mentioned before, a full manual mode. And this is uh, in full EV shutter and aperture steps with the exceptions that I just mentioned before. And there's also in the manual um, mode, five steps of fill flash. And that can be kind of useful. So you can vary the level of your fill flash, fill flash in five distinct steps. Now you can use the camera's built-in meter or you can also use an, expo uh, an external exposure meter in manual mode. Now there's also an aperture priority mode. Uh, that's where you set the aperture yourself and then the camera will automatically select the shutter speed that works with that uh, aperture. And there's also an auto mode as well, of course. Now the Mint SLR 670S has a manual mode, as I mentioned, using the time machine and that has full EV shutter steps right again from one half second to one two thousandths of a second. Uh, there's also auto modes uh, in which you can use uh, the old SX70 film which has an ISO of 6160 and there's also an auto mode for using 600 film speed film and that has an ISO of 640. In terms of film the Nell Plus basically it's designed to use i-type film iType film is kind of nice because it's it's basically the same film as, as used with uh, either camera, uh, except that the film pack does not contain a battery. It, it, it's, it, it relies on battery power from the camera itself. Now the Mint SLR 670S uses the traditional style of, of uh, Polaroid SX70 film. Uh, it has the battery built right into the film pack. Uh, and with this camera, you can use either the SX70 film at the slower speed, or you can use the Polaroid 600 film at the higher speed in it. Now, the big difference between the iTape film, other than the fact that, that uh, the iTape film doesn't have a battery built in, is that it's also a, a little bit cheaper than the, than the regular film used in the Mint camera. Uh, iTape film uh, US runs about six, $16 and the regular film used in the Mint camera and also any other vintage uh, Polaroid camera is going to run $19 US per pack. In terms of flash, the Nell Plus, as you can see, has a built-in electronic flash. Uh, it works automatically with the camera. The Mint SLR 670S does not have a flash at all. Uh, if you want to, you can use the Mint electronic flash accessory but you can only use it in, in auto mode and the reason for that is, is that it the flash connects into the uh, the standard flash attachment that is on your vintage uh, SX70 camera so you have to remove the time machine put the flash on which means that you then have to use the automatic mode that is inside the the camera itself so based on my experiences using both cameras here are my personal pros and cons for each now the Polaroid Nell Plus, starting with that camera, on the pro side, it's certainly a, an affordable camera. It's one of its more attractive features, really. Also, is it uses i-type film, which is both less expensive and it also reduces the environmental impact. You're not throwing away a battery every time you change a film pack. 
It also offers quite a few creative modes. There's double exposure, portrait, tripod, light painting modes, not to mention manual mode. There's also a built-in self-timer and an electronic flash. On the con side, the lens is noticeably soft. I noticed it right off the bat that it's much softer than pictures taken with my Mint camera. Also, it has a really inaccurate viewfinder. It has a limited range of shutter speeds. There's that missing F45. And if you're using manual mode, it requires a camera plus the app and plus maybe an external meter if you're using a handheld meter for your pictures as I would. So you got this rather awkward configuration where you're trying to somehow manage three different devices while you're taking a picture. Now in terms of the Mint 670 SLRS, the pros are is that it has a this excellent sharp glass lens, really nice lens. Extremely accurate composing with the through the lens viewfinder. You do have complete focusing control. You have a full range of shutter speeds. And although you don't get a lot of accessories when you buy the camera, there's a lot of third-party accessories, both those vintage accessories made by Polaroid Corporation that you can find online. And also there's a lot of people that are making new accessories expressly for this type of camera. Now the cons of course, is that this is an extremely expensive camera. And the other downside, I guess, is that you're limited to that F8 aperture. So in the end, there really is nothing about the Now Plus that would cause me to desert my Mint camera. Uh, the Now Plus certainly has the edge when it comes to sophisticated controls available through the Polaroid app. I mean, the app does connect effortlessly to the camera. You just open the camera, the app on your phone, um, an iPhone 8 in my case, you turn on the camera, and they just connect instantly, ready for action. So it's really, really easy to use the app with the camera, uh, other than that you're trying to manipulate the two things. But my biggest issue is with the camera itself. The lens, as I mentioned, is noticeably soft, and it is one stop slower than the, the lens on the aperture on the Mint. Um, the small viewfinder is really small, and it's also not very accurate at all. Uh, it has rounded corners when you're looking through it and that just makes composing all that more difficult. And as well there's no parallax adjustment marks for close-up subjects. So the Now Plus just can't compete with the uh, folding SX70 camera used by Mint which has a really sharp glass lens. It has that accurate through the lens viewfinder and manual focusing down to 10 inches. Um, these are the features that I need to take the best possible image and just the fact that Mint has taken the time to marry this camera with its own sophisticated manual overrides is really sheer ingenuity. And all this from a really small company that's basically satisfying a niche market of Polaroid fanatics, such as myself, apparently. Uh, so to that extent, really, I would say that $879 US is well worth the price of admission. So who should buy the Now Plus? Well, at $149, $150, the price really can't be beat. If you're in the market for your first Polaroid camera, the Now Plus is certainly a solid choice. I mean, after all, Polaroid sells its regular auto-only Now camera for $120. So for less than the price of two packs of I-type film, why not just upgrade to the Now Plus and gives you all that much more opportunity to play with the numerous creative options it offers. So if you're still on the fence about spending $879, think of the Now Plus as a gateway camera, a chance to see if manual control is important enough to take the plunge for a Mint camera. And if you are at all intrigued by my zone system posts, and there's links down below, uh, the Now Plus, along with a spot meter iPhone app, such as the Lumu light meter or the Light Me light meter app, uh, is an, certainly an affordable way to try out the zone system. So I hope you found the comparison of these two cameras useful. Stay tuned because I'm going to be releasing two new videos shortly, uh, each with helpful tips for getting the most out of the Now Plus camera, including an easy modification that will let you use black and white contrast filters with the Polaroid black and white film, and also use a calibrated neutral density filter uh, so that you can get those um, 
one half EV settings with, with the Now Plus. Anyways, until next time, until those videos are released, uh, get out there and take some Polaroid pictures. Bye-bye for now.